our dear viewers and listeners. Greetings to you in the precious and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to today's Bible study. And as always, we ask you to invite somebody to join. And we believe this will be a time well spent. As is the practice, before we begin this session, we take some time and dedicate to God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for today. Yes, Lord. For the hearing of your word mm. and for the reading of your word. Yes, Lord. May you come alive through this word of God mm -hmm. that is able to change us, mm -hmm. direct us, mm -hmm. instruct us, inspire us, King of Glory. Yes, Lord. Let it bring change in our lives, King of Glory. Mm -hmm. Let it manifest the life of God in us. Yes, Lord. That everyone that hears it will never remain the same again. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pledge that after all is said and done, mm -hmm. that the glory, the honor, and the worship will be returned to you alone. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, we will take today's reading from the book of Romans chapter 6. And we will handle the first two verses. So let's read. The Bible says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sing? That grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Father, bless your word. We have now come to another section of the book of Romans. But before we begin this major session, I want us to recount where we have come from. So that we then have a holistic an overview of where we are right now. The first section we handled after the introduction of the book of Romans begins with Romans chapter 1 verse 18. And goes all the way to Romans chapter 3 and verse 20. This is where we have revealed to us the condemnation doctrine. Basically what it means that the entire race, all humans are condemned in sin. And the, the writer Paul brings it to us. So emphatically in the verse 18 of chapter 1. Where he says that the wrath of God. Is revealed from heaven. Upon all ungodliness. And unrighteousness of men. Basically all men. Like he later brings it to us. In Romans chapter 3. Verse 23. That all have sinned. And all fall short of the glory of God. So everyone is included. No one meets God's standard. Every man man can short. Having understood the doctrine of condemnation, then the question is what happened? So from Romans chapter 3 verse 21 all the way to Romans chapter 5 and verse 21 we have unveiled to us the doctrine of justification 
alone by through faith alone in Christ Jesus alone. But when Julia and Yom Sang Gafogwa or Gwatu Gobuako or Woku Kirizakwoka Eramu Christo Yesu Jika. Now this is what we see as the divine act of God. Where he declares believers in Jesus Christ to be righteous. And it is not just declaring. This declaration has a basis. So you are declared righteous. Based on what Christ Jesus has done. So it has nothing to do with what you did. It is based on the acts of the righteous one. What Jesus has done. On the behalf. Of guilty hellbound sinners. The basis Omusinji. is on the perfect life that he lived. His sin bearing substitutionary death on the cross. And, and how that propitiated God's demands for justice. And redeemed us. And reconciled us. With God. So that now we are the righteousness of God. Through Christ Jesus. Yes. And having been made righteous or credited with Christ's righteousness. We saw the benefits that come with righteousness. And we saw that we have peace with God. We have access in the grace in which we stand. We have hope. We have the love of God poured out in our hearts. And we have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Having understood that, what that means is that all that believe in Jesus Christ, to them is imputed this righteousness. And along with it comes the benefits of righteousness. The story does not end there. In chapter 6, all the way to chapter 8, verse 39, we have unveiled to us another section which deals with the doctrine of sanctification. And here, in this text, we find the infrastructure of sanctification. Now, in chapter 12 to 15, we will see the practicalities of sanctification. But here we see the infrastructure. So basically, let's look at this word sanctification. What does it mean? What is this all about? You see in Christianity, we have a lot of words that do come up. And unless we take the time to understand everything about what we say will be a misunderstanding. So when we talk about sanctification, what do we mean? Now, sanctification comes from a Greek word Hagiasmos. Hagiasmos. 
Now, hagiasmos is an interesting word because it is from that word that we get the word hagios. Hagios is the word holy. Hagios chitegeza mutukuvu. Or where we get the word hagion. Hagion is where we get the word saint. Now, all these three mean the same root word, which means to separate. The idea here is to get an object and cut it into a half. So that the result of that you have two pieces. Or two separate sides. Imagine if you had an orange or an apple. And you get a knife and cut it into two pieces. Basically that is the word that comes to the word sanctification. So you separate into two sides. You come up with two separate sides. So to be holy means one is being separated. So one is separated from something to something. So to be holy is to be separated. Holy is to be set apart from sin unto God. So it's not just the separation. But it is a separation from something unto something or someone. So which brings us to the believer in Jesus Christ? When we talk about sanctification, when we talk about separation, the question that should run within our minds is separated from what? Now there are three Evil powers. That we are separated from. When we come to Jesus Christ. Number one. We are set apart. Separated from sin. Now separation from sin. Means that sin. No longer has power over us. The governance of sin over a believer. Or the dominance of sin over a believer. Seizes the day they give their life to Jesus Christ. So the first one is the severance or the separation from sin. And we will begin with the negatives. Separated from sin. Now the second one. Is the separation or being set apart from the world. So it's not that you get out of the world and go to heaven. No. You remain in the world, but you are set apart from the world. You are set apart from the evil system of the world. What I want you to understand is that there is an invisible system that is in this world. This system is anti-God. It is anti-Jesus Christ. It is anti-Bible. It is anti-family. It is anti-holiness. It is anti-everything that is good 
and moral. Eri woko ntana no kuwaka nyebi ntebi oburu njobebi mpise nungi. And this is a wicked system. E gole numbi. And we have been set apart from its power and from its pollution. This system creeps into every aspect imaginable in the world. It creeps through leisure. You find it in entertainment. You find it in music. You find it in education. You find it in government. You find it in health. You find it in every aspect of life. In the world of education, it is ingrained there. Because it need, it wants to attract and catch everything at inception. And the goal is to grasp the mindset. And the ruler of this system is the God of this age. His name is Satan. He's presiding over this evil. But the good news is there is a sovereign God. And there is nothing he will, the devil will do that the God of heaven will not have to do. And that is the good news. The third power that we are separated from is from the influence of the devil himself. You see, before we come to Jesus Christ, what has happened is that we are held captive. We are slaves of the devil. We are here to do his will. We are here to fulfill his purposes. But when we come to Jesus Christ, this is what sanctification does. The moment we submit ourselves to Jesus Christ, in that moment, that separation happens. The powers of darkness, the power of the devil, ceases to have dominion over you. Now, this is the negative aspect of sanctification. Now, let's look at the positive. Part of sanctification. I told you sanctification has two aspects. The from and the two. Now we have looked at the separation from. From the power of sin, we are separated from the power of the world, and from the power of the devil himself. Now the positive. You are separated unto what is good and glorious. Having been separated from this, you are now set apart unto the image of God. Unto the likeness of Jesus Christ. Unto the purposes of God in no, his kingdom. So, you now have a purpose. You now have an identity. You are now conformed to the image of God. So, when we talk about sanctification, we are referring to the internal activity by God. 
Katonda ya gwe kolera the believer mumukiriza by setting us apart mwe mutwaula see god has done more katonda akuzo okusinga than just to declare us as believers okusinga kwanjula ati katina ofuse mukiriza that you are righteous ndio ofuse mutukirifu is everyone whom god justifies buli muntu katonda gwago bakomusango he sanctifies iroyo amwaula so it is impossible tetinzika omukiriza a genuine believer in jesus christ omukirize mu kristo yesu to keep on asigalire anyikire mu kutambula sinful driven life mu bulamu obwe kibi so the moment you give your life to jesus akasera ko kwasa yesu bulamu bo you are separated and God begins to do a work in you. Katonda natandikira okukola mu omulimu. You are set apart. Oyawulidwa. From the dominion of sin. Okujibwa ku bufuzi bw'ekibi. From the world. Oyawulidwa okuva ku nsi. Oyawulidwa okuva ku manyi gogo. Ero yawulidwa okuva ku sitani. And now molded into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Katobumbidwa mu ngeri ya Kristo Yesu. So you increasingly become more like Christ. Kati we yongera buli jyo kufana nanga Kristo. And God like the potter he is. Katonda nga bwali omubumbi removes the old ajawe ebite ebibi and he fashions the new nabumbe kijja so how is justification katokugobwa ko musango different from sanctification tukwao tukwao la kutia kukwao libwa so these are two things that i need us to understand njagala tutegere ebintu bine bibiri how is justification different from sanctification Now these two are different in a certain way. And I will give you five areas. Number one, justification involves our legal standing before God. So it has got nothing to do with our character. It has nothing to do with our work. Or how we live our lives. It has to do with our status. Before God. On the other hand. Sanctification. Does not involve our standing before God but it involves our daily work the internal aspects the condition of the heart the condition of the mind your will your affection all these are areas that are handled when we deal with sanctification so sanctification deals with what god is doing in me kitunulire omulimu katonda gwali mukola muze ngaita mu moyo to make me like his son jesus christ mfana nenga mwana we kristo yesu so justification ero ogobwa ko musango the second point Justification has more to do with what God has done for me. Ogobwako musango kitunulira kitunulira nyecho katonda byakoze kulwangi through Jesus Christ. Ngaita mu Yesu Kristo. Sanctification on the other hand. Kumukono guli okwaula is what God is doing in me. Kicho katonda kyali mukola munze with me era nwa munange and through me ero kuita munze so the whereas justification is imputed okugoba ko musango bachi kugatta ko bugasi so it is credited to your account bachongera kubula mubo you receive it the day you believe in jesus christ sino cho weebolo nakurokiriza kristo yesu so When we talk about sanctification, sanctification has an impact on who you are. And how you live. So God is imparting something real to you. So 
justification number three eno ya kusatu ogobwa ko musa happens once it's a one time event e cho chikuba ko mulundi gumugoka before god eri katonda there is sanctification na yato kwaula is an ongoing process uno muri mugwa bulijo so justification okugoba ko musa is an act that involves god alone chino katonda ya che kolera wala sanctification na ye okwaulibwa is an act that involves you and god chino chi muri muguli wakati wo ne katonda so in a way when we talk about justification mungeri butuga wetogera kugobwa ko musango god is the only active agent katonda ye ye kachi ekolera when we come to sanctification atebwe tudda ku kwa ulibwa this is a joint effort guno muri mugwa abantu so babiri the believer omukiriza bears a responsibility na yali no buvunanyizibwo bwakola in his daily christian work mubulamu bwe buno bwe ki christayo konsi it is very important to be able to understand that we no kitegera when we talk about justification and the next point ogobwa ko musango involves a heavenly court scene e chuchutura go muri munga court etudde muguru where we stand before god nga fetuze mu maso ga katonda and the judge of heaven and earth o mulamuzi we guru nensi declares that we are the righteousness of god nalyo katulangirira kubo butukirivu bwa katonda when our sanctification na yate we tudda mu kwa ulibwa creates an earthly scene e chochi tukomya okunsikuno where we live every day of our lives nga chiri mu pisa za february jo so whereas justification is an immediate pronouncement kati okugobwa ko musango bakulangirira ko mbagira wo when it comes to sanctification naebwe tudde eri mukwa ulibwa this is a life long pursuit guno muri mugwa buli jo so justification also Eyo kugobwa ko musango is the same for every believer. Chiriyeri buli mukiriza. No one is more justified than the other. Teri oli gwe bagoba ko musango kusinga kubanne. We all have the same perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to our account. Fena twawe bo butukirivu wa Kristo Yesu bwenka nankana. However when it comes to sanctification. Na ya teri mukwaula. This differs from person to person. Chino chanja ulo chiri kuse chino mu some believers we grow into the likeness of Christ much faster than others abakiriza bajja kula mango kufana na Kristo okusinga kubanaabwe some will resist temptation more than others abalala bajja kwe wale bikemo okusinga abalala some will discipline their bodies abamwe bibiri jabwe bajja jifuga for the purposes of God in more than others oro kugurumiza katonda no bulamu bwe okusinga kubalala some will develop and mature much faster in the spiritual things abamba ya kula mu bintu byomoyo okusinga abalala more than others so when those would basically be the differences that we do have when you contrast justification and sanctification katebe bi ebiva ye bi ebi ebyaula wetugato wetukwato kwa ulibwa no kugobwa ko musango however na ye both are connected byo nabikola wamu so still by what i need to point out chino nacho nino chikutegeza everyone who god justifies buli muntu katonda gwago bako musango he also sanctifies katonda yomu ya mwaula so there is no one teri muntu who can be sanctified asobolo kwa ulibwa unless they have been justified okujja konga asose gobwa ko musango gwe so the first step is the justification tusoke tusoke da kukugobwa ko musango gwa and then you begin the process of sanctification au ne tuzako omugendo gogobwa ko musango ogwo kwa ulibwa sanctification ero kwa ula starts the moment one places their trust in Christ Jesus kutandikira olunako rotto ko obwesigwebo mu Kristo Yesu and that is when you are justified we olunako rogo bwa ko that sabu. is when you move awo senguka from the broad way nova kokubolirye gazi because we all begin by going through 
the broad gate. Fena to sokera mukubuli li wankache li engazi. And we are on the broad way. Ira tulio kukubuli li engazi wa. To destruction. Ngaliko mekeleza mukuzikili da. Which is the illustration Jesus gives us. Yesu chiecho kula vina kochi ato wa. In Matthew chapter 7. Mumatayo musamu. Where he says enter by the narrow way. Nga kugamba mwe mwingiri okuyi mwokuiti na mukubuli li efunda. For wide is the gate. Kubanga wankache li engazi wa. And broad is the way. Nekubo gazi that leads to destruction. Eritwala mukuziki And there be many. Beirabanji that go in by it. Abali abagenda yoku ita muriyo. So it doesn't say they find it. Taku gambia inti bali zula. No, they are in it already. Bali yoku bata ambuda. And then he says, because narrow is the gate. Nagama kubanga wankaje nufunda. And difficult is the way. Edane kuboliyo zibu. Which leads to life. Edi komekeleza mubulamu. And there be few who find it. Edaba tonu abali zula. So this narrow way is found. E kuboli nefunda bazula li zuli. And once you find it. Bumalo li zula. You walk through the narrow gate. Edo oitambulu oitambulu. And then you go on to this narrow way. So everyone that is justified moves from the broad way. Walk through the narrow gate. Na yingiro kuita muge muanka chenfunda. Who is Jesus Christ? E muanka cheo ye Christo Yesu. And they begin this journey on the narrow way. Ne batandi ko rugendo kukubiri ya funda. Which leads to life. Die rigenda mubula mu. I must point out also. Chino na choka ancho kedi. That when we talk about sanctification. Wetu ogeda kukwa ulivwa. There are basically three aspects of sanctification. Muli muwebi nitu bisatu. And they involve both our body, our spirit, and our soul. Atenga viko makumoyo kumeme no mubidi. And they are past, present, and future. Ela muli muwebi ya ita. Muli muwebi ya obuli wo. Muli muwebi ya mumaso. So without bringing out the confusion. I will not look at it as past, present, and future. But I will classify it as positional sanctification. Which is the past. And then we will look at the progressive sanctification. Which happens every day. And then the perfected sanctification. Which speaks of our glorification. So let's begin with the positional sanctification. So this is the separation that happens. At the initial. This is dramatic. It is where the power of sin is broken off your life. So sin no longer governs over you. The Holy Spirit takes charge of your life. And he becomes the driving force. He becomes the power. That drives you. So in that moment you are justified. So you are cleansed and washed. So that's what Jesus alludes to. In John chapter 3, verse 5, when he's speaking to Nicodemus and says, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say to you, that unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And he's speaking about somebody being born again. So this regeneration causes a washing by the Spirit. 
kuko kule ete kuna zibo kwa mwojo basically every slate of sin is wiped away buli bubyo bwe kibine busjibwera ne bujibwa wodala it is a coming from a sewer of sin kiringo kuva mu mpuku owe kibi and you are washed till you are spotless no no na zibo no jibwa ko paka nga toli ko nakabiko na this is what paul tells us Paulo na yato gaba in Titus 3:5 Tito 3:5 and he says he saved us ti ono ye yatulokola not on the basis of deeds ngata sinzi de kubikolwa bya free which we have done in righteousness yetwa kola mu butuki divu but according to his mercy na ye yatulokola kusinzira ku kisaji by the washing of regeneration ngaita mukunazi botufule kitonde ekijja and renewing by the holy spirit no kutuza bujja mu muyu mutukuvu I, I, i want us to look at a few verses enyiri tukatongereko just to drive this home tuchitegeri the first one we we'll look at is the one that we considered in today's text e kisoka che kiri mu byawandi kuve ne byalero which is romans chapter 6 and verse 2 mubalumi mukage sule yoku onyiri yoku bidi where paul writes paul awandi and says how shall we who died to sin tunakola tutyafe abafe li hiv still live in it ate tusigalenga tuchali balamu mucho so look at what he said He's saying as who died to sin that died is in the past so as a believer in Jesus Christ you are now dead to the rule of sin over your life sin does not have power over you so it no longer drives you forward sitie chikuwalirizo kola no holds you captive it no longer dictates what you do techicha akula gire ebyo kola why because in romans 66 balumi mukago ruwo mukaga and we shall look at it in detail as we go on tujja kubira beyo mu mass he declare as he points out aina cha tulaga and says knowing this fetumanyi de dala chino omuntu wa forwarder was crucified ya komererwa da so what is he trying to say akugamba we only know of one that was crucified fetumanyi olie ya komererwa da but what he is bringing to our attention na ya techa tulaga wano that there is a mysterious way waliwo enkole eyechama whereby when we are born again God transports us back to thousands of years and nails us to the cross with Jesus Christ so he takes us back and and now he speaks that we were crucified kata kugamba wakomererwa jesus was crucified oruna ku yesu we yakomererwa so we were put to death kati nawe watibwa for sin eliye olwechibi when he was put to death oruna kolo for sin we yafa so olwechibi in a certain sense he was dying for you mungeri endala yali yafa mu kifocho but in a certain sense he was dying with you na yate mukubikulibwa okulala ate yafira wa munawe so that is the essence of what he brings to the fourth year kati ge makuru ge nsonga za lero and when we get to verse 6 we will explore this more we tuli tu kamulunyiro lomkaga tujja genda kuziba so your old self na yo muntu olio wedda died was crucified with him oyo ye yakomerebwa wamuna ye and then he goes on to verse 11 uh, na koma mu 10 ne mu chapter 6 Musula yemwe yo mukaka consider yourself kati namwe mutandiko okwela ba to be dead to sin okubera ba fa ku kibi you have already died kubanga mwafa da kuchibi in another portion of scripture ebya andiku bibidala which is the book of first corinthians mchitabo cha ba corinthians ekisoka esule esoka onyiyo roku when the apostle paul writes the church in corinth paul awandikire kanisa ye corinth this is how he addresses them aba abagamba bwa she says to the church of god 
Eriye kanise ya katonda is at Corinth. Eri mu Corinthso to those who have been sanctified. Eri abo abaya wulibwa in Christ Jesus. Mu Kristo Yesu what is he trying to say here? Agamba is trying to say that everyone Jagamba anti buli muntu who is in Christ Jesus. Awa aba mu Kristo Yesu has been sanctified. And this points back to our regeneration. There was that break from the power of sin. Ruling over your life. And so he, you are now sanctified. In Christ Jesus. And you are now a saint by calling. So every believer in Jesus Christ is a saint. There is no canonization required. Every born again believer is a saint. If you are not a Christian, if you're not born again, then you are not a saint. But if you are born again, then you are a saint. You are set apart from sin and holiness. That is what sainthood is all about. And that comes with the new birth. That is the defining moment. When you believe in Jesus Christ. So God sets you apart. From the power of the flesh. From the power of the devil. From the power of sin. Your own nature. Crucified with Christ. And and now Christo. you are set apart. The new you is set apart unto God's purpose. So sanctification is God doing a work in your life. And having done that, he then makes you aware of what he has done. And that's the beginning. Look at what he says in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 6. Verse 9. Paul writes to the church. And says, do you not know. That the unrighteousness. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. He says, do not be deceived. Temulimbi Bwanga, neither fornicators, Newan Kuba de Abakaba, nor adorators, Newan Kuba Daba Sinze Bifana, adulterer, Newan Kuba Dabins, nor the effeminate, Newan Kuba de Abafuka Bakaz, nor the homosexual, Newan Kuba de Abadi Baby Siaka, nor thieves, Newan Kuba Daba, nor the covetous, Nabe Gombi, nor the drunkard. Know the revilers. Know the swindlers. Will inherit the kingdom of God. And he goes on to say. Such were some of you. But you were washed. But you were sanctified. So he points back to that time when God pulled you out from that pollution of sin from that defilement of sin he has now washed you he has now sanctified you. He has set you apart into a different kingdom. He has marked you with holiness. He has marked you with purity. He has marked you as his righteousness. So there is a complete break from everything that you were from homosexuality, from idolatry, from drunkenness, from swindling, from covetousness, you moved from darkness into light. There is a clean break with your past. You were washed 
kubanga wanalo kunazibwa no lyoko ya ulibwa that speaks to the position of sanctification now let's look at the progressive sanctification this is the ongoing work the daily work as a believer and increasingly become more and more holy practically speaking you become more like Jesus Christ. You are not becoming more like the world. You are not becoming any more like your sinful self. The sinful self. You are now becoming more conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And this is what Paul talks to us. In Romans chapter 8 verse 13. He says if you live according to the flesh. You must die. But if you live by the Spirit, you are putting to death. Look at the present continuous. You are putting to death the deeds of the body. You will live. So habitually, what is trying to say? That if you habitually live according to the flesh, your life will end in death. But if you live according to the Spirit, you will be a totally different person. So the new you is not going backwards. The new you is going forward. The new you listens to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You have died to sin. You have put sin to death in your life. And you are now living after the Spirit. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 5, Paul states, and says, therefore, Consider the members of your earthly body as dead. Or putting it another, put to death the members of your body. So what God has already put to death is not the practice of sin. But the power of sin in our lives. What we are now dealing with is the practice of sin. So that's why he tells us in Romans 12 and 2 that we must be transformed. By the, by the renewal of our minds. In Hebrews 12, 14, he tells us to pursue holiness without which no man will see the Lord. So true believers in Jesus Christ continually pursue Holiness. press on to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. According to Philippians chapter 3. So the new self is being renewed like we see in Colossians 3 and 10. So with regard to our salvation, we are growing. Like 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2 tells us. So this is progressive. Progressive. This is continuous. And that leads us to the third 
aspect. Which is the perfected sanctification. Now, perfected sanctification is synonymous with glorification. So there will come a time when this body will be clothed with glory. So when this flesh will be done away and will be conformed in every aspect body, spirit and soul like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now that is a wonderful moment we are looking for it. But the work the Lord is doing a work in us and that is what sanctification is all about. Which brings us back to where we began. And having looked at what sanctification is all about, there is a question. And the question is, shall we then, what shall we say? Are we to continue in sin? So that the grace may abound. So, what is Paul trying to say here? What he's trying to say here is following up from Romans chapter 5. Where he broke off and we saw that when sin abounds, Grace abounds even more. And so, the question that often comes to many people that we encounter in life is that, can I continue to sin? Because when I continue to sin, the grace increases even more. And many have come to the wrong conclusion concerning the message of grace. Where they think that because you have received grace, therefore it means you, you should live whichever way you want to live. But that's not what the Bible is trying to say. I know there are others who are perverted who draw this second conclusion. For them, they say we actually need to sin more. Because when we sin more, then God shows his grace more. He pours more grace. That thinking is perverted. And this is what Paul is responding to with regards to the message of sanctification. He says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? Now, the Greek word to in continue is the Greek word epimeno. Epimeno. Epimeno has the idea of habitually doing something. So it is doing something out of habit. So the question is asking, shall we continue habitually seeing it? So that grace may increase. And in verse 2, he says, certainly not. He uses the Greek word mege no ito, which means certainly, absolutely no. May it never be. There is no way, not at all. What is he trying to say here? He's saying there is no way. The abundance of grace can be an encouragement to sin. 
Tolerance for sin in one's life. Tolerance for sin in one's life. Making no ito. No way. There is absolutely no way that the abundance of grace in one's life can be an encouragement to sin or the tolerance for sin. And he does not leave it at that point. He gives us the reason why there is no possibility that this can happen. He asks the question and says, how shall we who die to sin still live in it? If he's talking about the position of sanctification, we severed from sin, the power of sin. At that point, we die to the power of sin. <clears throat> How then? How we die to the power of sin? We died. And we're referring to all those that are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. And the answer is it is impossible because you cannot live in that to which you have died. Practically putting it, you see, the moment you come to Jesus Christ, your mouth cannot talk the same way. Your eyes cannot begin to gaze at the same things. See, your hands, your feet cannot continue to handle and pursue the things that you used to pursue before. Your desires change. This positional sanctification brings about an instant change in you. Munda the mugu. power of sin is broken. The, the point bwa. is this. Chino Sanctification. Or when we talk about salvation, it is not filling paperwork in heaven. And after you have filled the paperwork, then you go out and do whatever you want to do. No. The approval of Forgiven, justified, comes with instant change. You move from the broad way and come to the narrow way. So if you are still on the broad way and think you are on the narrow way, you are simply being delusional. You are deceived. Because the question is, how shall we who have died to sin still live in it? The answer is, we cannot. So we died to sin. We died not to the penalty of sin. We died not to the acts of sin. What died was the rule and the power of sin over our lives. So it no longer has the grip on you. You are no longer an old creation. You are not even an upgraded old self. The old self was crucified. It died. 
ye yafa it was buried ye yazikibwa it can never be resurrected talina ngeri ja sobola okuzukira so this is not an idea this is not an idealistic position. This is the fact of who you are. You are dead to sin. So if you are there and have never believed in Jesus Christ, the power of sin over your life is still a present reality. But it can be broken in this moment if you only surrender your life to Jesus. Why don't you say this prayer with me? And wholeheartedly surrender to God. It will happen instantly. You will be justified. You will receive positional sanctification. And the progressive sanctification begins immediately. Why don't you say this prayer with me? Say the God of heaven. The judge of all the living. I am a sinner. I need a savior. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You are the savior of the world. You came and lived a holy life. In my place. Died in my place. No farm rose again from the dead. Today I place my trust. In you. I surrender my life to you. I ask Lord that the power of sin be broken off my life. The power of the world. The power of the devil. The power of the flesh. Be broken over my life. Wash me, Lord. Sanctify me. And empower me to live from this day forward as a saint. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Amen. If you say that prayer, like this, you are saved. You have been justified. You have been sanctified. The power of sin has been broken off your life. And now, you can live triumphantly. God richly bless you as you embark on this journey. For those of you that are wonderfully saved, I put it before you that we are all justified at the same level. We have received the same justification. But sanctification has levels. We make the choices. And I pray you make the decision to set yourself apart. Work with the Holy Spirit that you achieve the purposes of God for your life and reveal Christ to your generation. God richly bless you as you embark on this journey. From Dominion Church, it's been a blessing having you. So as we continue on this journey, we would like to hear from you. Please give us the call. Please send us the messages. And we rejoice together and glorify the Lord for what he's doing in your life. From Dominion Church, it's been a blessing having you. So till we meet again next week we say shalom God richly bless you